Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to use chat GPT to perform machine learning analysis. Even before I proceed to demonstrate how machine learning models can be built using chat GPT, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let's begin by asking a simple question as to what is chat GPT. If you are new in the world of chat GPT, you might always have this question as to what exactly is chat GPT? Where do I use chat GPT? What is going on behind the scenes? For the benefit of uh, those people who are very, very new in the world of chat GPT, I'd like to take a couple of moments to explain what is chat GPT. Chat GPT is a conversational bot. I repeat, it is a conversational bot. It was developed by OpenAI and launched in the month of November 2022. ChatGPT uses a combination of NLP and AI models to give answers to any question you might have. You might have questions related to quantum physics. You might have questions uh, related to, let's say, machine learning models or any other profession, ChatGPT will be able to answer these questions. At the back end, ChatGPT uses both supervised as well as reinforcement learning technique to answer some of the questions. You will be seeing ChatGPT in action in a few moments from now. Let me begin by introducing to you the data set that I'll be using for analysis in today's video. The name of this particular data set is IRIS data set. I repeat, this is a very, very popular data set which is publicly available. You can download this from Kaggle or uh, UCI machine learning repository. This data set has six columns. It speaks about the different flower characteristics of IRIS. The first column is ID. Second column has flower characteristics like sepal length. Further, we also have sepal width. Then you have petal length and petal width. So these are the different flower characteristics that are present. Sepal length, which is measured in centimeter. Then you have sepal width, petal length and petal width. The last column that we have is the species of flower. There are three different species of flower. I will be introducing you to the three different species in a while from now. If you look at the first record here, the first flower has a sepal length of 5.1 centimeter. Its sepal width is 3.5 centimeter. The petal length is 1.4 centimeters and the petal width here is 0 0.2 centimeters. What is the species of flower? This belongs to the Setosa species of flower. I like to examine the sample size in this particular data set. When I go to the last record, you can see it says 150. So we have 150 flowers belong to three different species of flower. Let's examine which are the three species of flower. I'm going to apply a filter here. Under the species column, when I look at the drop-down menu, you can see the names of the three different species. The first set of species is Setosa. Secondly, you have Versicolor. And thirdly, you have Virginica flowers. So these are the three species of flowers that are present in our data. Now, this file is in Excel. Let me show you the same file in the CSV format. As you can see here, this is the CSV format, which I will be feeding into chat GPT. I've got the same columns, ID, sepal length, sepal width, so on and so forth, which means I have got the header. The first row here consists of the header of the file. The actual data begins from the second row onwards. You have different flowers and the flower characteristics are being displayed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire file. So control A, 
and copy this. Let me make sure I've copied this. Now, let me move on to chat GPT. So this is how the interface of chat GPT looks like. You can get into chat GPT quite easily. In case you want to access chat GPT, I've created a couple of videos for chat GPT access, wherein I've demonstrated how you can get into chat GPT. Now, this is the box wherein I can type any question. The first question that I have is, can you analyze? Can you analyze? the data set given below. So this is the question that I have for chat GPT. I'm expecting it to analyze the data set. Where is the data set? I'm going to simply paste this particular data set and hit enter. Let me see how smart chat GPT is. Not bad for a conversational bot. Chat GPT displays the information. You can see here, it is typing a lot of information. Okay, let me scroll up to see what it has typed. It says, this is a data set which contains measurement for the length and width of sepals and petals of flower from three different species of iris flower namely Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. Each row represents one observation, and there are 50 observations for each species. So not bad for a conversational bot to recognize the name of the data set as well as the contents of the data set. It's also giving you the list of the variables along with the units. You can further read, this data set can be used for a variety of purposes such as analyzing the differences between the three species of iris flowers or building a model to predict the species of a given flower based on its measurement. It is a commonly used data set in machine learning and statistical analysis. So this is quite interesting that chat GPT has been able to recognize the data set which I've uploaded. The next thing that I would like to do is I'd like to display this data set in a better way. You can see here, the data set which I had uploaded is in a CSV format. Not very easy on the eyes. It is very, very unappealing and therefore not easy to comprehend. Now, as the second question, what I'd like to do is I'd like to type a simple question to chat GPT. Can you convert the above data into a table form. So I'm expecting chat GPT to convert the above data into a table form. Let's see whether chat GPT answers my question. It is typing uh, the variable names, species, okay. Wow, this is really beautiful. Look at the way it has been able to convert the CSV into a spreadsheet-like view. It's a lot easier for us to understand this when you have neatly arranged spreadsheet-like view. It is going to do this for all the 150 records. I'm just going to stop generating this. Let's look at what ChatGPT has done. You can see here, ID, sepal length, and sepal width. You also have petal length, petal width, and species. And for each record, it has been able to give me a spreadsheet-like view. Compare this with what we had earlier. Very, very unappealing, very difficult to comprehend what we are talking about when we have it in the form of CSV. But when I look at this particular spreadsheet-like view, this is a lot simpler and easy to comprehend. You can do this for all the 150 records, but I'm stopping it at the first eight records. The one thing that I'd like to do is, I like to simply right click and select the inspect button. Now this inspect button would 
give you what is happening at the back end. You can see here, this is the code that, this is the data set that we have. You can see here, this is the HTML code. When I hover the mouse here, it is just telling you the details of the seventh record here. So behind the scenes, this is the kind of HTML coding that is going on. Let me just close the HTML coding, come back to chat GPT. So I've just typed two questions. Let me now move on to the third question. When somebody gives you a data set, one of the primary questions that we ask ourselves is, what is the sample size of the data? If the data has weak sample size, perhaps we would like to boost up the sample size because nothing good comes out when you have a data set with a low sample size. So I'm going to ask Chat GPT a simple question. Can you give me the sample size of the above data set? Let us see what Chat GPT gives me. The sample size of the above data set is 20. Uh, as there are 20 rows of data in the table. Now, this is definitely a mistake. The sample size is not 20. Let me be more specific with my question. Give me the sample size of the entire IRS data set. Let us see if it gives me the right answer. Wow. Now it is more appropriate because it is saying the entire IRIS data set consists of 150 samples or observations. Now, if you're a Python user or if you're familiar with R coding, what you would like to do is you'd like to look at the distribution of a categorical variable. Whenever we have any categorical variable, we would like to look at the distribution. Now, let me just scroll up. The only categorical variable that I have in this data set is set of, sorry, the species column. You can see here the last column species is a categorical variable. The other columns are basically scale variables. What I would like to do is I would like to get the value counts of the species column. Let's ask this question to chat GPT. Can you give me the value count of the iris data set using the species column. Let's see what chat GPT gives me. It's taking a couple of moments to process my question. My question was not that hard, but surprising that ChatGPT is taking some time to process uh, this particular question. Here's the value count. Fantastic. You can see here, it is giving you the code here. It can't run the analysis because this is not the platform for you to run an analysis. Unlike R or Python, wherein you have a set platform which you can use to run your data analysis, here, it is going to give you the code. In fact, this is the output. It is giving you that there are 50 Setosa flowers. There are 50 Versicolor flowers. Then there are 50 Virginica flowers. The name of the column is species and the data type is integer. So it is evenly distributed. That's one of the conclusions that we can draw because we have 50 flowers for each of the species. Let's make a move on. Now, I'm going to ask the sixth question. Can you give me the percentage? The number is fine above, but it helps to have percentage. Can you give me the percentage for each species of flower for the above? table. 
fingers crossed not bad it has understood my question and it is saying setosa has 33.3% versicolor has 33.3% and virginica again has 33% of flowers you can just copy paste this in uh, in in excel or uh, in powerpoint let me now move on to the next question i'm going to say can you give me the class distribution can you give me the class distribution of the data using the species column via the pandas those of you who are familiar with pandas you will be able to recognize that pandas is a library that we use in python for data merging you can merge two data sets you can append you can uh, perform a whole lot of operations on pandas pandas is a library which is built on top of numpy so what it is giving you is we examine the result if we scroll up you can see here it is giving you the python code you can simply click on copy code go ahead and paste this particular code in jupyter notebook and run this analysis it is helping us with the class distribution you can see here it has run the value counts function on the variable class on the variable class and it is also producing the output of the analysis so we have already seen there are 50 flowers of each of these species so it is returning the output as setosa 50 versicolor 50 and virginica 50 so chat gpt has been very very helpful in pulling out the sample size so far in giving me the class distribution so on and so forth now i'm going to give it a wrong question when i say wrong question i'm going to type can you give me can you give me the value count for the price column price is a scale variable usually we do not look at class distribution and such things for a scale variable nevertheless i am asking chat gpt to give me the value count for the price column my bad you can see here it says i'm sorry but i don't have access to the data set you are referring to got it there is no column called as price here that is a problem there is no column called as price so what i'm going to do is i am going to select this question copy it again there is no column called as price is not of price let me use petal length let's see what it gives me as iris data set does not have price column i assume you meant petal length column you are absolutely right you can see here it is let me use stop generating because there are 150 records what it is doing is you can see here the petal length of 1.5 cm there are 14 flowers which have a petal length of 1.5 cm similarly there are 10 flowers which have a petal length of 4.9 cm then there are 9 flowers which has a petal length of 4.8 cm so on and so forth this is how it is giving you the distribution of a scale variable but do remember that we do not look at the distribution of a scale variable we do not look at the value count and such things for a scale variable value count is mostly appropriate for categorical variables now one common problem in the world of data analysis is to convert a scale variable to a categorical variable since petal length is a scale variable i would like to convert this into a categorical variable so i'm going to type a question can you group the column petal length in iris data set 
into three groups into three groups of low petal length medium and high petal length not bad it is saying that yes we can group it's also indicating the function that it is going to use cut function in pandas you can see here import pandas as pd this is the code that it is using pd dot read underscore csv is the function that it is using to import the csv file then define the edges of the groups starting with zero the edges okay let me wait for it to finish typing there's a lot of information that uh, chat gpt gives you okay let me now scroll up you can look at the boundaries here so up to three centimeters we are going to call the flower as low petal length from three to five we are going to call this as medium petal length from five to eight we are going to call this as high petal length define the labels for the groups we are calling the labels as low, medium, and high. Let's now create a new column with group labels. As you can see here, pd.cut, it is using the cut function. We are providing the name of the scale variable. We are using the edges. Remember, the edges is a list 0, 3, 5, and 8. And finally, we are providing the labels option. Now, finally, what we are doing is we are displaying the top five rows in the updated data set. Let me ask it to display the output of the new variable you created in a table form. It is again typing the code. I'm more interested in the output than the code. You can see here, it is giving you the distribution of the uh, distribution of how many flowers have a low petal length. It is around 54 flowers have a petal length which is low 67 flowers have a petal length which is medium and 29 flowers have a high petal length so these are certain basic analysis that is possible using chat gpt now i'm going to proceed to do certain feature engineering stuffs using chat gpt the 10th question that i'm going to type here is can you encode the data set not bad it says to encode the categorical variable species remember that species is the only variable which is not numeric here so it says to encode the categorical variable species in the iris data set we can use the label encoder this is a class from sklearn.preprocessing sklearn is a machine learning library which is present in python so it is helping us understand what label encoder does you can see here this is the way you can use the label encoder fit underscore transform within this function you can pass the variable name as iris species you'll be creating a new column which is called as iris species what this does is it will be able to encode your variable in case you want to copy the code simply choose copy code and you can paste this in python it saves a lot of time in writing unwanted code it also helps non-programmers if you're a non-programmer without any background in programming you can simply type your question and chat gpt would do a lot of heavy lifting as far as coding programming using the right library and right function is concerned you can just copy paste and still perform analysis.
So this is as far as encoding the data set is concerned. Now, I'd like to move on to certain hypothesis testing. Let me see how helpful is chat GPT. So the 11th question that I'll be typing here is, can you perform or can, I, can you conduct a one sample t-test? Can you conduct a one sample t-test on the variable petal length? Question mark, enter. Let's see what it gives me. By default, it is using Python. You'll see here, scipy.stats. This is the library that it is using to run a one sample t-test on the column petal length. We are setting up the null hypothesis. Now, interestingly, it is testing, it is telling you what is the value here of the population mean. Set up the null and the alternative hypothesis. Let's say we want to test if the mean petal length is equal to five centimeters. So we are testing whether the average petal length equals five centimeters in the second step. Let's look at the third step here. In the third step, we are using a function t-test underscore one sample. We are passing the variable name and the mean value is being provided. The alpha value is set up. If the p-value is less than point, sorry, if the p-value is less than alpha, what is the decision you need to take? Else, what else? what is the decision that you need to take? So it is giving you a step-by-step -step procedure to set up your hypothesis and to execute this in Python. You can just copy paste the code as before and you can get the same result. Let's look at the last line. It says the output will be a statement indicating whether we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis at the chosen level of significance. So this is very, very interesting and super impressive that we have a conversational bot which can do so much of analysis and it's a great boon to any data scientist. Let's now proceed to perform another test. Can you conduct independent samples t-test using the column petal length and any two species of flower. Remember, independent sample status is used when you want to compare between two groups. Many times, independent sample status is also referred to as A-B testing. So we are working on the same li library, scipy.stats in Python. We are loading the iris data set. We are adding the column names here. We are selecting the petal length because this is the variable of interest to me. Look at the T test output. You can see here, this is the command, conduct the independent samples T test. It is running T test underscore int on the variable petal length. We're using versicolor and setosa. So these are the two flowers that we are using. We have to supply this as a list and therefore it has pulled it out as a list. What this does is when you unpack the output of t test underscore int, you'll be getting the t statistic value as well as the p value. To print the result, you can type the last code. Again, let me remind you, it can't run the test here, but it is helpful in the sense that it is giving you the output of t statistic as well as p value. If you were to replicate the same analysis in Jupyter Notebook, by and large, you should be able to see the same result. You can see here, what is the interpretation? Chat GPT also gives you the interpretation of the analysis, wherein it says the t-test calculates the difference in means between the two samples and compares it to the variability within the sample. The t statistic value of minus 39.47. You can see here, this is the value it is trying to interpret. The t statistic value of minus 39.47 suggests a significant difference between the mean petal length of setosa and versicolor flowers with a p value of almost zero.
So this value, you can see here it is e power minus 57, which is, which is rounded off to a value of zero. This indicates that we can reject the null hypothesis that the means of the two groups are equal. This is really fantastic because it saves a lot of time and, and uh, energy because if we have to do this by ourselves, we would have to struggle in any of the softwares. So we have done t-test, independent samples t-test, uh, one sample t-test and independent samples t-test. These are the two things we have done. If you want, you can perform one-way ANOVA or two-way ANOVA for your analysis. The next stage is to run a machine learning model. Let's say I am a non-statistician and I do not know what's the difference between supervised learning, unsupervised learning, restricted Boltzmann's machine, what is, uh, what is deep learning, so on and so forth. I do not know what is the appropriate model and therefore I'm going to request chat GPT to run a machine learning model and give me the output. So this is the question that I'm going to type. Can you build a machine learning model? Can you build a machine learning model? to predict species. I'm going to help it by saying, use species as the target variable. I think this is as specific as I can get. Can you build an ML model on species? Use species as the target variable. Let me see whether chat GPT comes back with an answer. Not bad. It is giving me the procedure. You can see here the thought process. As you know, supervised learning techniques are very, very vast. You can run a lot of supervised machine learning techniques. Looks like it is run a random forest model. Let's examine what it has given me. You can see here. SQL from sklearn dot model selection import train test split. This function is used to split the data set. Here we are separating the independent variables and the dependent variable. We are creating X, which will contain all the independent variables and Y will contain the dependent variable. Further, what we are doing is we are running the train underscore test underscore split function on the data set to create four new objects, X underscore train, X underscore test, Y underscore train, and Y underscore test. What is the machine learning technique that it has run? You can see here, one popular algorithm for classification problem like this is a random forest classifier. You can see here, from sklearn.ensemble, import a random forest classifier. This is the functionality which we are sort of uh, calling. Once we sort of initialize and run this particular model on the training data set, we will be able to generate the predictions. Those predictions we are saving as Y underscore pred. Finally, to evaluate the performance of the model, you can use a variety of measures from sklearn.metrics. You can use accuracy underscore score. You can also use the confusion metrics. There are other metrics like F1 score, precision, as well as recall. If you want, you can use chat GPT to get those values. We have built the model. Let me now request chat GPT to evaluate the model. Can you evaluate the performance of a random forest classifier in the above data set. You can see here what it is trying to do. We are familiar with 
the first three lines wherein we are importing the necessary functionalities. Second piece of code is wherein we are splitting the data set. Uh, we are creating the random forest classifier. This is not what I was looking for. I'm just looking at the final performance. Not bad. I have run the random forest uh, classifier quite a few times uh, for other videos. And uh, if my memory serves me right, the expected accuracy that you'll get is around 97%. So this is displaying the right accuracy. You can also look at the final statement that chat GPT displays, it sees this means that the random forest classifier was able to correctly predict the species of flower for 97.8% of the samples in the testing data set. So we have completed an entire cycle from checking the sample size to doing some feature engineering, doing some exploratory data analysis and such things. Further, we built a we looked at uh, certain hypothesis testing, like one sample t-test, independent samples t-test, and built a model. Now, let me examine whether you can create certain visualization in ChatGPT. Can you create a bar chart? My spelling is wrong. Can you create a bar chart using species as a variable. So here is an example of how to create a bar chart. So you can see here, this conversational bot cannot create a chart. What it is still doing is it is trying to help you with the code. You can copy paste this code in uh, Jupyter Notebook. In Jupyter Notebook, you'll be able to create the bar chart. However, you will not be able to create any of the charts, may it be a pie chart, bar chart, or any of the charts in this platform of ChatGPT. You can see here, get the value counts, create a bar chart, then plot dot show. This is the code that we use in Jupyter Notebook to create a chart. But this is not a tool wherein you can create any visualization. That's one point which I want my audience to take away. If in case you are interested in creating graphs and such things, at best, chat GPT will help you with the code, but not the output of the chart, so on and so forth. There's a very interesting concept, which is called as explainable AI. Now, there are many different packages. Primarily, we tend to use what is called as LI5 or the Lime package. Both of these things are, both of, both of these libraries are part of what is called as explainable AI. Now, what this does is it explains the machine learning model. I'd like to run LI5 and Lime to pull out more insights from the machine learning model. So I'm going to type a question to ChatGPT. Can you interpret can you interpret the model with LI5 and line? For those of you who are not familiar with LI5, LI5 basically stands for explain like I am five. That's what it means, explain like I am five. It explains the, the output of machine learning code as though you are a five-year-old kid. As I already mentioned, this is used to explain the machine learning models. One of the biggest criticisms for any machine learning model or deep learning model is that it is not as interpretable as a statistical model. So this is where a LA5 package steps into a rescue because using the LA5, you can explain the output of the model. There are a wide variety of things uh, that we can do with LI5. Let's say you have run scikit-learn. It could be XGBoost model, or for that matter, even Keras models. You can use LI5 to explain the output of Keras as well as your XGBoost model. It is trying to give me the code, okay? It has printed the entire code. LI5 and Lime are model 
agnostic interpretation libraries that can help explain the predictions of the machine learning model. Here's how we can interpret the random forest classifier model built to predict the species of iris flower. You'll see here it has run the LI5. This will display a table showing the important scores for each feature. So it's just uh, going to show you the variable importance with the higher scores indicating greater importance. Fantastic. From the table, we can see that the most important features in predicting the species are petal length, petal width, and sepal length. I may have to execute this in uh, Python to get a sense of which are the most important drivers. As section in the section two, what it has done is it is running a line package to explain how the model arrived at a particular prediction for a single data point. We can use the lime dot lime underscore tabular command to run the analysis. If you were to execute this in lime for each record, it will be able to explain as to why the model has classified a particular feature, a particular record rather as setosa flower or species. Okay, let me push it further because the output is not very clear. So I'm going to ask certain probing questions to chat GPT. I'm going to say use LI5 to interpret the output of the random classifier model that was built on the iris data set. OK. It is helping you install LI5. You can use the pip install command to install LI5. But I'm more interested in seeing the results of LI5 on the data. OK, it is not giving me much here. Perhaps there could be another way of rephrasing my question. Or else you can just copy paste this particular code in Jupyter Notebook and rerun the analysis to see for yourself how explainable AI works. So with this, I've come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we have typed around 20 questions, all related to data science. And you can, uh, if you're an aspiring data scientist, or if you have, let's say, five years of experience in the world of data science, not just five years, you may be a very, very experienced data scientist. If you want to quickly run some analysis, you can always use chat GPT to run the analysis. It will do an excellent job of running many of your analysis. It can also be helpful in, it can also be helpful in uh, pulling out code. In this data set, mostly I focused on Python code, uh, but please be aware that you can pull out a SQL code or a Java code using chat GPT. So it's a great boon for data scientists because it reduces a lot of time, energy, and you can focus your efforts on analysis. Less time can be spent on programming. I thank you very much for watching this particular video. I hope that this particular video was helpful. I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like and share my videos. Thank you once again. Have a great day ahead.